And we who are alive have to thank the Creator, at least for waking us up this morning, so that we can do what we have to do. Yeah? Well, thank you again for being here with Conscious Talks this morning. Again with me, nothing is pre-planned. I'll just go back as to where I started yesterday, last week, sorry, where I said I'm living in the Levantilis constituency, Malik to be exact. On this special day, in the year 1970, I saw a lot of people leave in my community. I was amazed. So, a young man, 10 years, everybody in red, I decided to go in my home, and all I saw was two red ribbons, my sister's two red ribbons, which I took and placed them in my pocket and started following the crowd. When I reached out the road, I, I tie one of the ribbons on my forehead, one on my wrist, and when we reached in the vicinity of Mova Junction, there was, I mean, people, <laughs> too much to mention. Everybody in their red apparel. While in Mova Junction, however, I was sharing the sound of drums, which wasn't far away, Fernandez Compound area to be exact. So, while following the crowd, we reached in Fernandez Compound, I look on the trucks, and I saw this dark figure shouting, Power! Power! Amanda! And the crowd responding accordingly. At 10 years, I just innocently started shouting, Power! Power! As we returned heading east. It was a bit late the afternoon, and my mom was waiting at the corner for me to get out with a lady by the name of Miss Bueller. <laughs> and I had the, how I could put it, well, it's a flogging that I will never forget. After all those years, I still remember that particular day and that flogging. And while I'm being flogged, my parents, my mother and Miss Bueller were shouting, what do you know about my candle dagger? What do you know about my candle dagger? Okay. Transitioned eight years later, which I was I'm now 18 years. I went to the Malik Senior Comprehensive School, which I indicated. I also had two sons who went to the Malik Senior Comprehensive School. I did POB, Principal of Business, while waiting on results after examination. My mom decided. You're not Lyman on no block. So my mom took me to this institution. My mom worked at the British High Commission. That, that office, that British High Commission office was on Furnace Building, facing the port. <clears throat> and not too far from that building, at the time, Holiday Inn, now being the name Renaissance. And just obliquely opposite Renaissance, there was a company by the name of CMTS. Caribbean Marine Technical Service, C as in cat, M as in man, T as in top, S as in T, CMTS. <clears throat> there I was in this institution, as I would say, a young man, took me the very first day, and the very first day I went, I was hired as a trainee. I mean, I felt elated at the time, yes. The following day when I went to the same said job, all the managers, one of them, Mr. Winfield Clemens, Mr. Osai Olatunji, Mr. Balaboon Olatunji, managers of the said business, they called a meeting the following morning and indicated to the rest of the staff that all week they were trying to get someone and they hire this gentleman on spot. Mind you, those days I, I used to wear Rasta hairstyle and there I was being hired. They explained to the workers the reason why they hired this young man, first of all, his mother brought him. His mother brought him. And secondly, he never asked, how much are you paying? The only question he asks is that he's interested in learning. Okay. 
So I went on within the second week or so. I noticed men with African apparel frequenting this establishment. And as a young man, just minding my business, doing what I have to do. And within the second week or so, I saw a gentleman, tall, African apparel. And when I saw the gentleman, I said, that is Mr. McCandle that I'm going to speak in about. Because I recall that day, that fateful day at the age of 10. That tall gentleman on that truck, it was another replica of Mr. McCandle Dada. And if you, if you don't know him in terms of his height, this special height, you must know him by his voice. Because he has a husky voice. And that day in question, I said, what a coincidence. Here I am in a, at an institution where years ago I was flogged by my mother in the company of her friend, Miss Beulah, and she brought me to this institution unknowingly that the said Mr. McCandle Dagger is in the institution where I'm at at this point in time. Over the years, I looked up at men who I perceive in my respectful view who would seek the interest of the Afro Trinidadian. Because beside that company, the company transitioned to another company where there was a split, and the split was Josa, Josa Enterprises, where Mr. Osai Olatunji was part of that said company, and I stayed on with that company. So there I am again in the presence of a lot of men from the NJAC at the time, Kafra Kambon, Makandal Daka, Ayaguru Ome. And Jack has Chinese, Indian, a young man at the time just looking on, watching, observing, yeah? Quite recently, quite recently, Emancipation Day to be exact, 2022, this year, COVID. Prior to that, I wrote a letter. I wrote that letter sometime last year. With all the COVID and what have you, and based on the experience I had, and based on this particular day, which was Emancipation Day, I decided, curiosity again, I decided to see where this emancipation place is. Now, I am speaking here, and I don't belong to any organization, I don't belong to any grouping, this is just me living an experience. So here I am. COVID is in the air, and because of COVID, we know emancipation is where all our fruit Trinidad and will meet, get together. You see? Put on our African apparel, what have you. But because of the COVID, two consecutive emancipation, nothing has, like that has transpired. So I decided on Emancipation Day to look for this place. And I decided to look a hood. I think they said it was in Bujarak Road, wherever, wherever. And I found this place. Huh. When I found this place, thank be to God that I'm a strong man in spirit and in health. Other than that, I believe I may have fallen. Yeah. What presented itself to me that particular morning? When I found that particular place, named the Emancipation Support Committee, wherever that office in Bujarak Road, first thing that greeted me was a gate with a chain and a lock. Chain! 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 Hmm. As we speak, it's still there. That day in particular, the place, I mean, high grass, well, of course, no celebrations so or nothing happening, but I went curiosity, consciousness. And what I saw was appalling. What I saw was appalling. I wrote a letter to five men. The five men knew themselves. 
in connection with this whole situation. I started when I was 10. Everything I said today, I put in that letter. I placed in that letter. And the men know themselves where that letter is concerned. I am asking the question, is there anything feasible in terms of land space for the Afro-Trinidadian community? And I would like to specify and zero in to the Emancipation Support Committee. I'm speaking land in that aspect so as to for the Emancipation Day celebration, we know that we have our space. And it mustn't be just for a day. Just for a day. That space is supposed to be there. So all around, all year round, we have commerce. Things happen. We could rent out a part of that property. And that same rental fee could pay for certain things. I always hear Mr. Cambon speaking to a library. We could have a library on that compound. We could do a building on that compound, as I always say in my heart. That building will have to that building have to be like 10 stories high. 10 stories high. So on one floor, we could have a hospital. One floor, we could have a library. Yeah? We have to think like other people think. We need a space. I am here with all the level of humidity. Because who is he? 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 Mm. But I am saying with all the level of humility that something could be started. Something could happen. Where the Afro Trinidad and on that particular day, that day what we call Emancipation Day. Yeah? We could have a space to call our own. And year round young people could visit that place. We could visit that place. And we could build on that place and that space. Mr. Kamwan. Mr. Kafra Kambon, sir, I hope you are hearing me. And to which I speak, I know you would be aware from in the year 1970 with Caribbean Marine Technical Services. Yes, sir, I am the young man who worked there over the years. And today, seeing what I saw on Emancipation Day on Bojarak Road, with that gate, with that chain, and that lock. That touched me. That touched me. And it touched me every night. There are so much more. So much more. But in time, in time and with time, and with the help of God, I am sure something good would come out of this. I listen on a daily basis. I love to listen. I love to listen. I've been listening for years. From inception of this station, I've been listening. Mm -hmm. From inception of this radio station, I've been listening. Those who have passed and gone, God bless their soul. Mother Randu. God bless her soul. Mr. Padmo, McDonald Padmo. The Gladiator, Brother Blues, I could call names, I don't have nothing written down. All the, the, the few I might remember is those what come to mind. But I love to listen. I'm always listening. I'm always in the pavilion. And I'm not speaking of yesterday, I'm speaking years gone by. Always listening. And I just came with that intuition consciously to say you know what there is time something should happen with the afro trinidad and community is concerned something conscious land space is with what came up yeah and i'm doing this with the greatest level of humility no kind of 
Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King. No, 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 no. I live in Malik, Lavantilis to be exact. Humble individual in my community. Yeah. With God's grace. And I'm proud to say, and I'm, a lot of people, I, and I'm saying this with respect, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people afraid this four letter word called land. I don't know why. We have to be a people of strength very soon. The Muslims, the Indian Muslim will be celebrating their thing. And we know their space, where they are at, without any kind of assistance. We have to be independent when we get that particular land. When we get that land space, we must be able to finance our land space. And I said it here the last time. If each of us, 100,000 of us, give $100, that is $10 million. Some of us, some of us might be able to give more than a hundred dollars i ask that something positive come out of my little five minutes what god has blessed me with to say something so that it would reach the right air so that something could come out of this little conversation. And I say, with God, by God, all things are possible. I was brought up in a Christian home. And I now have a home where I try to impart that wisdom and that part of knowing God to my grandchildren. Because all my children are all grown. And what I am doing here is not for my children, but for my grandchildren and your grandchildren. I would like, ladies and gentlemen, for you to see that your children, your grandchildren, sorry, do not have to pick up this fight. I hope that all that are within the ambits of my voice could understand what I'm speaking to so that the young people would have a place to call home so that the stigma so that the only the gun numbers we're hearing would change with God's help of course again this is for the young people God is in charge. The young people do have a right to come and ask for no land. Since 1978, the only country in the world. To declare emancipation a national holiday is Trinidad and Tobago. Google that. I did it and I found out that. And to date, to date, when a person like me speak, hmm, <laughs> I know my people. <laughs> I, I know. But I ask that there are 10 like me and four more like me. Wait. A level of humility and respect could see what I am saying and understand what I am saying and hope that the relevant people who are supposed to be doing what I am doing would stand up and make that humble request with the level of humility also. Yeah? I hope 
by the next emancipation day something positive would be the uh, would be on the agenda from the said people who is in charge as i said let's at least i want to say this morning i don't think i'm here to criticize but to fix things if 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 it's a conjunction what i want to say if anyone from the emancipation support committee sharing me i am willing i am willing to assist with the removal of that chain and that lock on that gate i am willing to assist with the removal of that chain and that lock on that gate to replace to be replaced with something more hmm, acceptable for a better word at this point in time because we were speaking about slavery and change I mean, I mean we're talking about emancipation and when you look at that anyone could go up to the emancipation support committee and they would see what i'm speaking to what i'm speaking about i'm not casting exposure and there is a lot more i could delve into because i i i look around I, i'm conscious of what's happening around me and more so for the Afro youths, Afro Trinidad and Tobago youths to come, the young ones. We have to assist. A lot of people would have different views. Everybody have different views. But I believe we, as a people, could do something or make a start so that the younger ones, even though they may be ignorant to the facts that i'm speaking to people would say we talking and them are them are no time with he them are ready for that but when when the question is always when is the right time i think the time is now because time none of us none of us because of this COVID situation which make me even more conscious of myself None of us knows what tomorrow would bring. None. I know families that passed. Good families. People in Christian standings, they weren't aware, or I weren't aware that they wouldn't have been around today. No one knows what their future holds. I don't know what my next five minutes ahead would bring for me. All we do is ask God for that divine intervention, that guidance, that protection for our future, what is before us. We do not know. We all want best for ourselves, our friends, our families, our country, our government. But because of the timing, the different timing world wide we have to be different we have to be more proactive than ever i could pause for a pause and ask if anyone want to call in on the said matter a discussion could be had i'm not perfect i'm not always right so we can open the lines. All right, so the numbers to call are 342 781 342 781 771 So you can call me now. Just in case I have to run. And everything I say, does it mean I am right? Someone might be in position to guide me i am always willing to listen everything i say like when i speak to my children i do ever say 
What I am saying here is gospel. No. Sometimes you speak to your children and you try to guide them in the right path based on the demographics, where you live, that kind of thing. But it doesn't mean because you're a parent you are right. I don't like that mantra. I tell them also that I'm speaking to you on this. It doesn't mean I am exempted from it. No. I'm speaking to you on it as a parent. In my book, a parent work is never done. And I thank God based on my demographics, where I am from and where I'm at, that God has blessed this young man. Yes, young man. I am a father. I am a parent. I am a grandfather. And I say it with the greatest level of humility. Yeah. Because I try my best to practice what I preach. How on God's earth you could tell your son, Boy, I know why you're doing this. I know why you're doing that. And you're doing the exact same thing you're telling your child not to do. That's a kind of double standard. Sometimes you are all not aware that you are doing certain things that you're telling your child not to do. We have to be conscious. We have to be conscious. Life is before us. Life is living. But we have to do it consciously. And as I live, I always say, I live without fear. And without the fear of man, I fear Almighty God who I cannot see. So when I speak, I speak without fear. As I said, the word L-A-N-D, -E, a lot of people is afraid to speak the land. Yeah. Because the figure, when they speak to land, who they speak to? We are only the custodians. God is in charge of the land. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, the numbers to call at 342 0081 771 1791 and 4665 While I'm holding on for calls, I, I, I would like to speak to the As a matter of fact, King George V slash Mandela Park. Also on Emancipation Day, I visited that park. <laughs> and what I saw that particular day also was appalling. Emancipation Day, here is this peace tree, taller than the Mandela sign, or in alignment with the Mandela sign. Emancipation Day. Yeah. The King George the Fifth sign park sign, King George the Fifth Park sign to the left in marble, clean. Everything is okay. But the King George the Fifth sign. Tall peace tree. Broken. That too. I was also amazed about things like that bothers me. That's it. That's it. Yeah. You okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you for hearing me and Let's try at least to see how best things could work out in terms of land space for us on Emancipation Day. I thank you. The views expressed are not necessarily the views of the management of the street. 919 FM.
Tune into the street at 919 FM this and every Thursday for the program Conscious Talk. Conscious Talk. Where we are at and where we are going with Steve Antoine as regards the land space for the celebration of Emancipation Day. Every Thursday from 10.25 a.m. to 10.55 a.m. It's Conscious Talk on the street 919 FM. Hi, I'm Valentine Garcia. And I'm Nikki Garcia. Please join us on the final hour broadcast every Thursday at 9 a.m. on the street, 919 FM radio. Every week we will journey into the amazing word of God. So please join us. See you then. What is Apex? It is the pinnacle of high-performance vision through a lens.